in association football, a long ball is an attempt to move the ball a long distance down the field via a cross, without the intention to pass it to the feet of the receiving player. In continental Europe the style is called kick and rush. It is a technique that can be especially effective for a team with either fast or tall strikers. The long ball technique is also a through pass from distance in an effort to get the ball by the defensive line and create a foot race between striker and defender. While often derided as either boring or primitive, it can prove effective where players or weather conditions suit this style. In particular, it is an effective counter-attacking style of play in which some defenders can be caught off guard. Statistical basis, the long ball theory was first discussed by a retired RAF wing commander a Euro Charles Reap a Euro in the 1950s in England. Reap was an amateur statistician and analyzed not only the number of passes that led to a goal, but also the field positions where those passes originated. Reap documented his findings in various publications including match day programs. Reap developed a number of concepts describing effective long ball play. Gullies refer to the optimum position between the corner flag and six-yard box from which to make the final pass into the penalty box. The three-pass optimization rule emerges from the fact that a higher percentage of goals are scored in moves involving only three passes prior to the shot. The nine shots per goal maxim, stating that on average, only one goal is scored for every nine shots. And the 12.3-yard position, which is the mean distance from the goal that all goals are scored. The long ball game is also advocated in such books The Winning Formula, The Football Association Soccer Skills and Tactics, by Charles Hughes, which demonstrates with statistics that a majority of goals are scored within five passes of the ball. Jonathan Wilson criticizes Reap's statistical analysis as heavily flawed. The three-pass optimum, for example, comes in for particular criticism. Wilson notes that while Reap's statistics showed that a higher percentage of goals were scored in moves involving three passes, they also show that three pass moves account for a higher percentage of all shots. Instead, the percentage of shots for which three pass or fewer account is higher than the percentage of goals for which they account, implying that moves involving more passes have a higher ratio of success. Furthermore, Reap's own statistics show that this trend becomes stronger at higher levels of football indicating that moves with a greater number of passes become more effective amongst higher quality teams. Reap also fails to distinguish statistically between three pass moves that emerge from long balls and those that emerge from other sources such as attacking free kicks or successful tackles in the opponent's half. Effectiveness, the long ball strategy has often been criticized as a method that has held back the England national football team. Hughes became the head of coaching at the FA in the 1990s, and used this position to promote his theory of long ball, which followed on from the work of Reap. Hughes and those who defend the tactic claim that time and time again, teams playing direct play have more success. At the 1994 FIFA World Cup, for example, the winning Brazil team scored the most goals from three or fewer passes, while the team to score from a move involving the most passes, the Republic of Ireland, were eliminated in the second round. While multi-pass moves such as those by Brazil against Italy in the 1970 FIFA World Cup final or Argentina vs Serbia and Montenegro at the 2006 FIFA World Cup are widely lauded as brilliant examples of football, it is partially the rareness of success for such long moves that results in their appreciation and makes them ineffective tactics to attempt to replicate. It is however used by teams desperate to score a goal before the end of a match, though this is probably as much due to the lack of time for a gradual build-up as it is for its perceived effectiveness. The long ball technique is also effective in lower level football matches since players lack skill to work as a team and pass the ball accurately up the field. A long ball is a quick counter-attack move and with a fast striker may produce multiple goals. Notable proponents. Examples. The long ball is sometimes criticized as being used by weaker teams with less tactical skill. In the hands of mediocre teams, or at the lower youth leagues this might be so. Analysis of its implementation at world-class levels however, shows that effective use of long ball techniques can be found in numerous competitive World Cup or Championship club teams. It can be used as a counter-attacking style, 
or as a daring through pass when opportunities open up during a game. The long ball requires top-level skill to implement correctly. Mere passing is not the only variable intelligent running into space, good dribbling and crisp finishings also required. One of the best uses of the long ball was Netherlands striker Dennis Bergkamp's goal against Argentina in the 1998 FIFA World Cup. Dutch defender Frank de Boer initiated the move from near the middle of the field, with a long pass that curled over seven opposing players. Bergkamp controlled the difficult ball, spun past a defender and smashed it home. The example illustrates the power of the long ball style but also that it is more than simply pumping the ball upheeled. Only Bergkamp's excellent skills were able to take advantage of the de Boer's outstanding and daring pass. As such, it emphasizes that football is a game requiring not only a comprehensive package of individual skills, but imagination and creativity as well. Both are present in the long ball style. Contemporary teams like Norway and Sweden have also demonstrated the viability of the long ball approach when executed with skill, precision and creativity by top players. Norway played a characteristic 4-5-1 formation in the 1990s and early 21st century. The left back would often hit long crosses to Joe Stein Flo, who in turn would head the ball to either one of the central midfielders or to the striker. This was known as the flow pass, and the Norwegian national team garnered much criticism for its perceived long ball approach. Egil Olsen did, however, take the national team to two World Cups, and the long ball style of play is considered to have played an important role in accomplishing this. One of the greatest of the Norwegian goals scored with this style was by the striker Tor Andra copyright flow during the 1998 World Cup. Similar to the Bergkamp goal, but played to an advanced man on the wing, it began with an extremely long pass from Stiginj Bjrnebye. Flo was alone when he received. He ran on and cut inside to beat his defending opponent, then slotted the ball past the goalkeeper Tafal. The Norwegians went on to upset the mighty Brazilian team in this match. However, Brazil had already won the group before this game took place while Norway needed to win. It should be noted that accurate passes aimed at a specific player are examples of individual long balls, but do not represent the spirit of a team playing a long ball game. In that situation, the team would be pumping long balls up repeatedly into an area, rather than a specific player, hoping the striker would get some of them and the percentages would pay off in the long run. Another hope with the long ball is that by hitting it into the area, the defence may make a mess of it such as with Ireland's goal against the Netherlands in the 1990 World Cup. This is also part of what makes it attractive at lower levels. Like England, Ireland are notorious for playing the long ball forward, possibly owing to their shared footballing heritage and tradition which continue to this day. The long ball can be very effective as a switch in game plan in pressure situations. In Chelsea's quarter-final victory over PSG in the 2013-2014 Champions League, PSG needed to defend their 3-2 lead on aggregate for 10 more minutes when Fernando Torres entered the game as a substitute for Oscar. Chelsea's rehearsed game plan for this scenario was to go direct from anywhere in the field, and PSG's defensive line fell very deep and very compressed. All secondary balls from either Chelsea or PSG players fell into spaces occupied solely by Chelsea players, leading to multiple goal-scoring opportunities, one of which eventually taken by Demba Barr. See also Formation, Football Tactics and Skills, Revy Plan, Total Football, Striker References External links, All the Bulldogs Fall Give Rise to a New Breed of English Soccer? The English Malleus how will English football develop?